Returning to the good old world of Gunpla, to the dismay of my kaiju audience, Bandai has done something unique this time around, where they actually decide to go back to the past and patch their first, but hell of a flimsy real grade kit, with the state of the art mechanics seen in today's real grade kits, in which we have this beauty here, after the meticulous hours spent carving, attaching, and applying the various components, but such practices are beneficial to your cerebral cortex. So, if you want to be a smart man like moi, LIAR! I recommend the hobby. When closely observing the Granddaddy Gundam re-Christian in modern real grade treatment, Bandai surely allowed their engineers to cook as the minute details and separated parts that are scattered throughout the model kit look like they've been constructed by Da Vinci himself which puts even other mechs from the same company to shame. This is firstly seen through the head in which, even without any panel lining, is beautifully recreated from the various lines placed throughout the white Gundarium armor, 20mm Vulcan cannons originally embedded on the side, the iconic white beefin, to the samurai mouthpiece and eye stickers attached, making for a head that embodies a frightening reality to those who oppose it. Moving down to the torso, just like the head retains the immaculate details that are placed throughout, courtesy of the modern day real grade treatments such as the use of separated parts rather than the plain old stickers seen throughout older high grades but becoming more absent in modern day ones. The various line markings that are placed throughout the torso that would make it great if you have the luxury to panel line your model kits. But if you're a grown ass adult who works from 8 to 6, minus 2 hours commute, say goodbye to both panel lining and stickers. But a unique component regarding the figure is that by removing the lower half, detaching the abdomen, detaching the lower casing, and unveiling the full mechanics of the plane, you have the core fighter and its full real grade beauty, in which if you're raised in a country that values human life, it can be used as an escape shuttle. But if you have the misfortune of being raised in a totalitarian community that values the majority over the individual, it's more or less a kamikaze shuttle. Looking at the humanoid arms, they're more or less shape-wise simple as they get with the basic shoulder armor and the minimalistic arm placed below. But don't be fooled by its simplicity, as unlike the original real break that was flimsy as time passed on as well as being rigid regarding movement, the 2.0 is solid as they get, with no flimsy pieces that are likely to fall apart with time, as well as possessing extreme levels of articulation that puts even Figma figures to shame. But maybe one of the biggest improvements Bandai made over the years are the removal of the articulated hands that fail to either pose or properly hold the accompanied weapons, to the simplified whole piece hands that while simple is easy to pose and can effectively wield the accompanied arsenals down the line. Moving further down, the waist, just like the hands, underwent a full-on redesign as well the shape is more or less identical, the inner parts that composed the original real grade were flimsy and happened to either fall apart or break with time, resulting in mine being retrofitted with a wire underneath. But say goodbye to those ailments that plagued the original as the 2.0 retains a brand new attachment that fails to fall off, is poseable and tight. Not to mention the Gundam boasting the separated crotch beefin and a huge dog that puts even the king of the monsters to shame. Why are you gay? But maybe one of the biggest factors that differentiate Gundams and other mobile suits compared to your kaijus is that rather than possessing a pair of either short arm or bulky but still short legs seen throughout the Godzilla roster, the Gundam possesses a pair of thin and long humanoid legs that not only add extra inches to the Gundam's overall height, but also are beautifully sculpted with the extra details embedded on. But a unique aspect of the legs is that if you bend a knee, bend the knee. The pieces that are attached separate, unveiling the complex gimmick inside with the numerous pieces and details all intricately depicted, making for a truly state of the art model kit that Bandai is able to provide. And moving down to the feet, they're more or less simple as they get, as the late 70s design is strongly found here due to the feet stubby nature and a simplistic design, but may be effective when performing some kicking maneuvers that Gundam is capable of inflicting on rival mobile suits or kaijus alike. 
Now, if you're familiar with your modern day Bandai figures or modern day thickness, the accessory department is a sector that has underwent the main bulk of the cut in R&D costs, resulting in either bare bone accessories in the fig arts line or a fake worse than death. But the Gunpla being Bandai's flagship for overweight man children who live in their parents' home, why are we still here? Just to suffer. Such cuts seen on the other departments are nowhere to be seen as the revision of the Granddaddy Gundam spared no expense, as it is accompanied by a decent pair of accessories that surely puts a smile on my face. As the humanoid figures with articulated components are accompanied by the typical faces and hands, the OG Gundam here adheres to such tradition. Minus the face is the only humanoid giant that can change faces around these parts is the giant monkey. Besides, the out-of-the-runner fist previously mentioned, the eye your open palm that makes it the perfect pair when the Gundam is at a defensive posture or a body to a franchise tradition of smacking those it deems inferior. Poetry is sort of they rhyme. Then there are these holding hands that, with the giant gaping hole in the center, allows the Gundam to dildo fist wield the company accessories. Talking of which, in the era of advanced warfare, where battleships and flying mechs rule the battlefield, the Federation, rather than investing in advanced shielding or firepower, decided to save costs and go old school, in which you have the splash shield that helps the Gundam defend itself against either ranged weaponry or melee weapons up close. Just don't think of using the splash shield against either cripples or aliens. Regardless of its full on effectiveness, the shield retains the real great detail seen throughout the mech, especially with a separated Federation insignia situated at the center, that with its yellow paint job differentiates itself from the all out red backdrop. Wait, a red background with a yellow star. But the best defense is an offense in which when the Gundam is forced to get close and dirty, the mech is able to pull out the saber on the back and turn them on, showing off its lightsaber showing off its beam sabers in which, by attaching the translucent red blades onto the handle, it acts to not only be lethal against hostile mobile suits in close range, but also acts to instill the same amount of lethality to Kaiju's alike. This is in due to the blade ejecting high degrees of concentrated energy that upon impact results in the subject being reduced to Kingdom Come, but will probably have less significant effects on higher end Kaijus. But against either melee oriented foes or if the Gundam requires extra firepower, there is this beam rifle that retains enough firepower equivalent to that of a battleship and is the primary arsenal that the Gundam uses to eliminate hostile mobile suits. And closely look at the titular weapon, it possesses a high amount of detail such as the barrel to the inner mechanics. This is not mentioning the various gimmicks involved such as the movable handle that allows the Gundam to target hostiles at longer range by mitigating the recoil, or the targeting system that with the movable pods allows the Gundam to lock on and target said hostiles at a longer range. But such weapon is required to be held by the titular mech in which this trigger hand that by Placing the piece on the pistol grip, attaching the trigger finger piece to the already placed piece on the other side, placing the hand cover on top, and attaching the set hand to the mech. You have the Granddaddy Gundam free to express his god given Second Amendment rights against Zakus, Seongs, and aliens alike. But there are times when the standard issue rifle lacks firepower especially in the case of fighting an alien, so do not fear as the Earth Federation learned from the 2000s Middle Eastern tradition where bullets don't pack enough punch, all a stick is just by the corner, in which allows an individual to knock up any opposing threats ranging from enemy armor, infantry, to airborne entities, giving off the illusion that the Granddaddy Gundam is capable of taking down extraterrestrial threats. That's what she said! <laughs> Regardless of its effectiveness, the bazooka is still a tool to be admired as the real great treatment shines with the previously stated characteristics such as the refined color separated parts, Texas lining that makes the set weapon something that can be seen in real life rather than something toy ass, and the movable gimmicks as seen by the adjustable handle making for a surely awesome accessory that I had initially low expectations at first glance. 
Now, if you're familiar with my channel, when comparing size, gunpla, especially high grades were usually left at the shorter end of the table, in which, unless you're called the Nightingale, let's just say that you're either getting molested by kaijus or mechs of non-Gundam origins. Look like a chicken! What? A chicken! No! And as the remake of the Granddaddy Gundam, which stands at a whopping 14 centimeters or 5.5 inches tall, here's the real great Gundam next to high grades, kaijus, and virgins like you and me. She's like me for real! When initially conceiving a model kit, the sheer effort of cutting, assembling, and placing the numerous parts makes any sane individual second guess whether they want to half-hassardly toy around with the finished product, and the ever more complex nature of the real great line makes it even more daunting. But you have to take into account. Firstly, Gunplay enthusiasts aren't your typical same individual. And secondly, Bandai, especially with the real great line, has underwent a rapid and unrecognizable transition in which their loose, rigid, and poorly implemented inner frame that was seen in the early real great kits were phased out for a frame that's more akin to those seen on Master Grades. And a culmination of 14 years of R&D endeavors is replicated in the 2.0 here. 14 years. The head as being attached by a ball joint can freely move side to side, up and down. The shoulders surely overextend the range those seen on any other humanoid figure. Boneless bicep movement, elbow bend is supernatural to say the least. Run the mill ball joint hand movement, waist movement is perfect to reenact the exorcist. In mecha form, leg spread is the definition of a core whore. Legs possess more freedom than your average taxpayer, knees similar to the elbows retain a bend so complex that some consider it unnatural. Ankles literally lack a cartilage and, of course, a toe bend. So, regarding posability, if you desire to place the Granddaddy Gundam in a special or special poses, this is the definitive kit for you, you sick fu- So, if I were to sum up my thoughts on the model kit, Bandai flexed their engineering skills once again as the second iteration of the Granddaddy Gundam in real great form, as rather than rehashing the previously built skull, Bandai spared no expense as he forego the previous mess that was the original real great and instead built a completely new skull with the modern day real great treatment as portrayed through, the excess details that are beautifully embedded, the supernatural range of posability that far exceeds the range of any other other figures I have in possession, the various hidden gimmicks that modern day real grace possess, and the accessories that are a company that contribute to the granddaddy Gundam. The only gripe I have is none. Nothing at all. In doing so, this is the definitive Gundam, and I would adore any person out there right now to get their hands on it. With that said, I'm gonna give the real great RX-782 Gundam 2.0 a ranking of an A+. 